What's up, guys? Welcome to quiz number 26, where the theme was rooks versus past pawns. And it's a question of can the rook stop the pawn before it becomes a queen with the help of the king, forcing the rook to sacrifice itself for the pawn? Because if you can stop that from happening, you win. If you can't, then you just get a draw. Now, just a quick note, the vase behind me that's full of pawns, which you guys or a lot of you guys guessed in the last video, I will be revealing how many pawns were actually in that vase at the end of the video. So make sure you stick around for that. But let's go ahead and dive into these three positions and see what was going on. All right, so here's position number one. It's white to play. And it's important to note that black is going this way and the pawns are going down. What move would you play here? Go ahead and pause if you'd like, and then we'll talk about the solution. All right, if you had a chance to look at that, from zero to 1,000, the top move was rook to b5. The next move was rook to g8 check. And the third move was king to b7. From 1,000 to 1,600, again, the top move was rook to b5. The second move was king to b7. And the third move was rook to b1. From 1,600 and above, rook to b5 was the top move, then king to b7, and then rook to h8. All right, so in these rook versus pass pawn end games like this, what black would like to do if we let them is move the king here, move the pawn here, 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 move the pawn here, and at some point our rook will be here, we sacrifice it for the pawn, they get a draw, right? That's black's goal. We have to figure out how to prevent that. In this position, actually every move that was suggested is a winning move, okay? You can win this position a lot of different ways. You can go here, you can go here, you can go back here, you can move the king, but there's one move that is very simple, which a lot of you did find, and it's the easiest way to win this position, and it's rook to b5. And what you wanna remember is if the opponent's king is on the sixth, the seventh, or the eighth rank, so they're, they're not really close to um, you know where the, the pawn is going, so these five closest ones, if it's on one of the three back ones, you can simply cut off the king and there's no way for black to make any kind of meaningful progress because they need to use the king to escort the pawn and you're shutting off the king, which means the only thing black can do is push the pawn. And now we simply bring our king over. We can take as long as we want. We can just kind of do this if we want. It doesn't really matter. We can literally spend however many moves we want. And the only thing black can do is eventually push the pawn. We're going to keep moving our king. And as soon as it gets to the third rank, it is now too far from the king. We simply come down here and attack it. If the king tries to come up, we just take the pawn. So the pawn has to move. And then we just zip on over and we take it next move regardless of what black does. So that's really all this position was testing to see if you knew this idea. Okay, cutting the king off and not allowing it to escort the pawn. All right, so that's kind of the first thing you want to look for in these rook versus pawn end games. Now, as we see in some of the other positions, that position number two and in position number three, it's not always that easy because a lot of times the king is in a better position and it's further down the board. And if you were to imagine, let's just say I waste a move here for a second. If I move black's king one space forward and we try to do the same thing, well, now it doesn't quite work the same. And why is that? Because now when the pawn gets to the third, if we go to an attack it, the king is still close enough. And if we wait till it gets to the second rank, well, now when we go and attack it, we're too late because it simply, you know, moves forward and gets a queen, right? And we're, we, we're too late to actually capture it. So it only works if the king is on six, seven, or eight. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. And now let's go ahead and jump to position number two, where things start to get a little bit more interesting. All right, so here's position number two. If you'd like to pause, again, remember black is going this way with the pawn. Go ahead and pause and figure out what move you would play here as white. All right, if you had a chance to do that, let's go ahead and take a look. From zero to 1,000, the top move was rook to h1. Then we had rook to g1 check, and then we had king to b2 was the third move. From 1,000 to 1,600, the top move was rook to g1 check, then rook to h1, and then king to b2. 1,600 and above, rook to g1 check, then king to b2, and then rook to b7. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the move rook to h1, which by the way, this is the wrong move. So if you said rook to h1, you are incorrect and the game is now going to be a draw. And the reason it's a draw now is because black's gonna play h5. And we of course have to try to bring our king over. So let's say king to b1, black's gonna push the pawn. We keep bringing the king over. We keep bringing the king over. And eventually 
we get this position where the king is attacking our rook. Now we got to move the rook somewhere. Black pushes the pawn and we can't stop them. Next move, they're going to uh, get a queen. And once that happens, obviously we trade it and it's a draw. All right. So what did we do wrong? Why was rook to h1 the wrong move? And what was the correct move? Well, one of the things that you want to remember in these end games, with, especially with rooks and pawns and kings, is that a lot of times there's a subtle little sort of tricky move that you can play that has big implications for the position. Okay. And what do I mean by that? Well, if we play the move rook to g1 check, this was kind of the key move. You can still win the position with king uh, to b2. So if you said king to b2, that's kind of the right answer. But this was really the key idea that I wanted to see if you saw. So everybody who said rook to g1 check really got it correct. But this move is actually very, very clever. And at first, it's kind of like, well, why, why are we wasting time checking? What are we going to accomplish? Well, here's the point. The king has to make a decision. Do I move this way or this way? And then do I go sideways or do I go, you know, backwards or forwards, right? And if the king moves forwards, which is what it would like to do, it wants to keep moving forward to help support the pawn, right? If it moves here, well, we simply skewer the, the pawn. Okay, so that doesn't really make sense. And if it goes here, well, again, we just come over here, we attack it, it's too far, can't help, right? And the same thing is gonna happen on both of these moves. We just simply win the pawn, right? Like this, or if it goes over here, like this. Which means, what does black have to do? Well, black has to go either back here or back here. Both of which are not, both of which uh, are not moves that black would like to play. They don't wanna move backwards, they wanna be moving this way because it's only a matter of time before we bring our king over and if Black's king is in a, isn't in a good position, they're not going to be able to win. So that's why this clever move, rook g1 check, is actually the key to winning this position because it buys us a little bit of extra time, which is just what we need to be able to win the game. Okay, so these kind of ideas, once you learn them, you want to keep them in the back of your mind because they can be helpful in different situations. Okay, so once we force the king to go back, now we can kind of do the same thing. You know, even rook to h1 now works fine because black has to play king to g6. And so we basically made black take two moves in the wrong direction instead of being able to just immediately go forward in the other case, right? And now it's very simple. We just bring our king over and it's going to take black way too many moves um, to, to get the king into the right position, right? And you can see here, we made it in time. We stopped the king from moving forward and, you know, black can do this, but we can simply do a waiting move. And eventually we get this position, the king has to retreat and we take the pawn. All right. So congratulations to everybody who said rook to g1 check. Very clever move. At first glance, it's, you know, it kind of maybe doesn't make sense until you start to really think through what happens on black's options. And you see that you're forcing the king backwards, which is not what black wants to do. All right. Hopefully that makes sense. And let's go ahead and jump to position number three. All right, here's position number three. Again, it's white to play. And again, black's pawn is going this way. What move do you think white should play? All right, if you had a chance to look at that, zero to a thousand, the top move was rook to f8 check. The second move was rook to d5 check. And the third move was king to f7. From 1000 to 1600, again, rook to f f8 check. Again, rook to d5 check. And then the third move was rook to d4. Above 1600, again, rook to f8 check, then king to d6, and then rook to g8 was the third move. So quite a variety here, which is pretty fascinating to me. You know, you only have uh, four pieces on the board, and we have all this variety, which is actually more than what we see in some of the normal positions where there's pieces all over the board. It's pretty amazing how end games can get so complicated, and you have lots of different options to consider. All right, now for this position, I broke out my old basic chess endings book by Ruben Fine, which you guys have seen before. And there's actually a rule uh, when your king and your rook are behind the pawn. It's generally a win if your king is within two ranks of the pawn. So if we count one, two, since we're within two ranks, and it's our move, it should be a win. But the, the trick here is that we can't waste time uh, with our king coming to get the pawn. Okay, well, What that means is when we start chasing this down with our king, and there's two ways to do it, which I'll show you in just a second. But once we start that process, we can't afford to lose time. So I'm going to show you another example that's not a win, that's very similar. Actually, I'll go ahead and show you this position right here. The only thing I've done is move the rook here. This is not a win. Okay, So this is a win for white. This is a draw. 
and we're going to see what's the difference here in just a second. So there's two sort of main winning techniques here, all right? The first one is um, just immediately kind of running with your king along the side here so that you can come over at the right moment to get the pawn, all right? So for example, king to d6, everybody who said king to d6, did anyone say king to d6? A few people, a few people above 1600 said this. Um, so you move here, okay? Black's going to put, probably push the pawn, doesn't really matter exactly the order. Most of this transposes. We keep running with our king. Black's going to keep trying to box us out. And eventually, once we get kind of closer down here, we bring the rook over with check, which forces Black's king to move over, gives us space to come in. And we are in time, really whatever Black does in this case, we're in time to win the pawn, okay? Even if Black would have went over here, we can simply go behind it. And when the pawn pushes, we go here. We're covering both uh, both of our pieces are covering the queening square, right? So even if black gets a queen, we can simply take it, right? And it's defended. So we make it just in time, all right? We simply bring our king down. The other way that you could do this, this is also a correct move, is rook to f8 check, which a lot of you guys did. Yeah, this was the top move, which is also correct. And the way that this line would go would be something like this. The king's going to try to move forward with the pawn. We bring our king this way. This time we're going to come around this side. Again, still kind of hunting down the pawn. And notice how we're not wasting any moves with our king, right? Every move gets us closer and closer to the pawn. And then eventually we slide the rook over and we're just in time to take it before black can, can get the setup and get a queen, right? So the important thing is that we didn't waste any time with our king. Now I want you to compare that to this position right here. And let's say we try to do the same thing. Well, first of all, we can't go king to d6 because the rook is blocking. Uh, the king, but you might say, well, can't we throw in the check and then bring our king around? Well, here's the deal. After we go check, black moves forward. How are you going to bring your king to hunt the pawn down? This is the best square to do it, right? You, This is the fastest path to hunt the pawn down. One, two, three, four, something like this. But instead, we have to basically waste a move and go a different path. So for example, if we try to go here, black's going to push and look at the problem that we have. We can't even really go forward this way. So you might say, okay, well, what if we tried to go around this way? Well, let's count one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, five. See how it's costing us an extra move? And that extra move is why this is now a draw. So for example, we go here, black pushes it, we go here, we're, we're trying to do the same thing. We are just too slow. And in this case, black does get the queen and we just get a draw. All right, so this is what's called a critical position. Uh, this this is a critical position. Critical position in the sense that it's winning for white, but if even one thing is not going in our favor, for example, the black's pawn is one space too f forward, or the king is one space forward, or like in this case, um, going back here, in this case, the rook is you know happens to be in the wrong spot where it messes up our king's path. If anything is wrong, then it goes from a win to a draw. So that's what it means by, by being a critical position, right? It's It could go either way, depending on what exactly is happening. Hopefully that made sense. Um, so these are very tricky, but basically the, the key that we're noticing from these positions is that as fast as you possibly can when it comes to hunting down this, or if you have any tricks with your rook, like we saw in the last position where you, we you know were able to make black waste some moves, those are crucial. Okay, so you want to really pay attention and really not waste any moves or it's uh, it's going to cost you okay so hopefully that makes sense and you guys learned something about uh, rooks versus king and pawns that are being pushed there's a lot more to this guys this is not an in-depth study uh, on all the different types of of you know end games like this like i know there are some subtle differences when it comes to which particular pawn like is it a rook pawn a knight pawn bishop king queen so that can affect it as well and then is your king you know, behind the pawn, on the side of the pawn, which side of the pawn is it on? Is it in front of the pawn? You know, all these different things. So in the front, it's an easy win, but um, you know, the side, the back, lots of different things can change is what I'm trying to say. So having said that, let's go ahead and talk about the pawns in the vase and see how many there actually were. All right, guys. So for those of you who don't know, in the last video on the channel, I showed you guys this vase full of pawns and I asked you to guess how many you thought were in here and the winner uh, was gonna get a free course or actually whoever um, guessed the exact number of pawns was gonna get a free course. 
Now, some of you were very smart in thinking that it should be a multiple of eight, because if I use pawns from sets, there's eight pawns, and so that makes sense. Except the sets that I was using were really old. Some of them had extra pawns, some of them were missing pawns, some of them had pawns that were broken in half that I didn't include. I used to teach chess at elementary schools, and so let's just say these pawns have been through a lot. Uh, so you would be wrong if you guessed a multiple of eight, but actually quite a few people got it correct. And I, I'm going to go check, uh, I'm going to do an updated check to see if while I was recording, anybody else guessed it. And I'll come back and update you with how many people guessed the correct number. Give me one second. All right, guys, I just checked. And at the time of recording this video, uh, there was about 11 or 1200 comments, most of which were guesses and 12 people. I got it correct. The answer was 89. There was 89 pawns in here, and I didn't intentionally choose 89. I just filled it up with what I had and then counted them, and it was 89. So everybody who said 89 pawns, congratulations. I'll be reaching out to you. Actually, I probably have already reached out to you by the time you're watching this video. So uh, congratulations. So you will get a free course. You can respond to the email if you haven't already and let me know. Um, which course you would like and i'll give you a code for that so thanks for for doing that i think that was fun i'll do this again at some point maybe not uh all the time because i feel like 12 is a lot more than i was expecting i didn't expect that many people to get it right so we'll see i'll do it again i'm sure with a different maybe different piece or a different vase or different something anyway i thought it was kind of fun thank you guys for participating and um yeah thanks for watching i'll see you guys next time as always stay sharp Play smart and take care.